1985, filmmaker Percy Adlon released his Sugar Baby, a German. Uh, hi. I'm pirating my own video, which makes total sense. No, no, don't think about it. Anyways, time and time again, I come across a movie that I really want to talk about, but it wouldn't exactly work as a video for my channel. So recently I started a page on Facebook, and I decided that I'm going to use this page to post old school text reviews of films that I really want to talk about. You know, fun fact, text reviews is how they used to do movie reviews back in the ancient times, like the mid-2000s. So, I strongly encourage you to check out my new Facebook page where you can read my first review for the TV movie, Trail of Tears. And the great thing about this is just like on YouTube, there's an option for comments, which means you can also participate and give your two cents. So I'm going to leave a link to my page in the description, and I hope you check it out and follow it so you can be notified when my page gets updated. Also, if you're just chomping at the bits for a new video, chomp no more. A new video will be out one week from today. I hope you like Martha Stewart. The basic plot of Sugar Baby and Baby Cakes both go like this. An overweight mortician who is complacent with her bleak existence sees an attractive subway motorman and is immediately smitten. Throwing caution to the wind, she puts a plan into motion. She takes a leave of absence from work, embarks on a mission to find out who he is, fixes up her apartment, and gives herself a full makeover. Her plan is successful, but since he has already committed to someone else, albeit unhappily, their carefree affair could be on borrowed time. On the surface, these two films seem very similar, but believe me, they are as different as night and day. One of the most notable differences is the portrayal of the main character. In the American version, she's lonely and doesn't have the strongest opinion of herself. It looks fine. I have eyes. I look like a two-story house. While in the German version, I honestly question her sanity. I've read many reviews on this film, and her mental stability is never mentioned, which I find peculiar because I'm fairly certain that I'm not just reading into this. Just look at the film language when she sees him for the first time. Why would the unsettling music play and the colors change like this if it was just simply a meat cue? Later on in the film, she talks about how she loved her mother who has since passed away and how she has nothing but resentment towards her father. While she is telling the story, the camera pans up to a picture over her bed of what I can only assume is of her parents and her father's face is cut out. Wowzers. This is extra unsettling, at least for me, because upon another viewing, I realized the picture was present in the background almost constantly. Lastly, when she first invites him to dinner at her place, initially he doesn't show up and she responds by trashing her place. The same thing happens in the remake, but I feel it has a very different meaning. In the remake, the character suffers with issues of self-esteem, and the people in her life seem to confirm her feelings. You have such a pretty face, but if you don't lose weight, you never will find a boyfriend. When she goes after this guy, it really feels like for the first time in her life, she's not buying into what she and everyone else around her tells her to believe. And when he doesn't show up, it simply crushes her. I'd argue it isn't even entirely about the man but more the fact that him not showing up confirms every negative thought about herself and this is what she gets for trying. In the German version, it just feels more like an unstable person having a fit. In my opinion, the German version comes off kind of like a student film. It's really ambitious with its camera work and the filmmaker seems really excited to get their hands on that box of gels, but at the end of the day, the actual story just falls flat. Everything about the plot is so vague, and I have nothing but questions about the two characters in the film. Is she mentally unstable? Did society and loneliness bring her to the brink? Or is it a chemical imbalance? She possibly implies that her mother had some sort of mental disorder, but again, that's also very vague. I don't think this film is vague or ambiguous because it's up to your interpretation. It's because it's poorly written and the viewer has no other choice but to fill in the gaps. This is not avant-garde cinema. This is an inkblot.
I recently showed this film to somebody and about two thirds into the film, he turned to me and genuinely asked, does he know her name? And as many times as I've seen this movie, I honestly could not remember if these two characters actually exchange names. The film makes no effort to show why these two want to be together, or what he sees in her, or frankly what she sees in him. The remake not only shows a legitimate relationship develop between the two characters, it also gives a very powerful commentary on our society. As someone who has battled obesity my entire life, I can say firsthand that society puts us in boxes whether intentional or not. Uh, no, 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 dear. You're in the wrong department completely. Look in our large ladies department. I was just looking. It doesn't hurt to look. Honey, just do me a favor. Look in our large ladies department. These are two people that believe they do not make sense together. She is led to believe that she should be ashamed of what she looks like and does not deserve certain things in life. He believes that he has to be with someone like this and have a life like this, even if it doesn't bring him happiness. But once these two ignore their barriers, they discover they do make sense together, and they actually have a lot in common. I guess I just sort of grew up and got a job in my own apartment. Yeah, me too. I've been on my own since I was 16. My mom and I moved here from Albuquerque, and uh, my stepdad didn't care much for me. <laughs> he turned to ice skating, and I turned to food. Yeah. <laughs> this version also adds a few new characters, and for the most part, I feel this was a great improvement. We are told about her mother's death and her troubled relationship with her father in the original, but this version, we are actually shown her relationship with her father. Never seemed to get things right. Same way it was with your mother. The father isn't bad per se, but he isn't the best at dealing with circumstances, and it definitely strains their relationship. Her father is also recently remarried to a woman with two young children. This woman is also complex. She's not a typical wicked stepmother, but she definitely resents the fact that her new husband comes with a previous family. Well, we've been lucky because no one's died in our family yet. Knock wood. My mother died. She's also given a friend in this version, which I like because it shows that she's not a complete recluse. That being said, this person is not a good friend. In fact, she's quite toxic, and it's not properly dealt with. The mirrors are terrible in these places. They show you like you really are. I guess I could just wear my gray dress. Yeah. Why go out and spend money on some fancy dress? How many times do you think you're ever going to get a chance to wear it? Probably never. Chances of either one of us getting married are zilch. Although I must admit, I love the actress who plays her, Nada Despotovic. Every time she pops up in something, I just smile. Anyone remember her part in Moonstruck? Chrissy, bring me the big knife! I tell you, I won't do it! The only other real complaint I have about the remake that's worth mentioning is the decision to make her basically stalk him. This is how it's done in the original, but for reasons I've already given, that makes sense. In this version, it just feels out of place. I understand that in rom-coms, some more unacceptable behaviors are played off as cute, so maybe the film was trying to go for a thing like in Addicted to Love. Oh my god! Oh my god, he's killing her! Yeah, he's killing her, all right. She's loving every minute of it. That girl of yours is a carnival ride! Yes, I know that Addicted to Love came out after this film. Thank you. Now, if you are a big fan of the original and you are just popping a vein while listening to me, first of all, settle down. I'm the one in the minority here. And also, there are things even I like about the original. Most notably, the actress, Marion Segebrecht. Now, I do have to say I am a child of the 90s that would occasionally get sick and have to stay home from school, so I am partial to Ricky Lake. It is time for our first game. It's the I Want a Man with Major Muscles dating game. Let's meet our first dumpy, Lydia. Also, I'd argue that Ricky Lake was at an advantage with this role. Her character was given a lot more depth, and the life of an overweight woman is reasonably explored, while Marion really didn't have much to work with. Regardless, she was still able to make her character interesting and engaging. I also know that she is somewhat of a muse to the director and is in quite a few of his films. You might even recognize her in some American films. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were Barbara. Mr. Rose, what's going on here? Are you okay? 
And lastly, my favorite thing about the original, whether intentional or not, it has a powerful message about how fixed our society is on looks. This film leaves a lot to be desired, but its shortcomings are often ignored and the film is instead celebrated for its looks. So in conclusion, I definitely think both films are interesting enough to check out, but if you only have time for one, I'd stick with the remake. If any of you have seen this film, I'd love to hear what you think about it. You can do that in the comments section or on my Instagram page at official Dave's Lost and Found. Thank you again. If you liked this and want to see more, be sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell, and as always, until next time.